evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, audit committee meeting. Did I get to start to say something? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. Tonight we have Sue Peters here from Cooper Areas who's going to go over the findings from our internal audit. Uh, the process started over the summer, uh, late summer actually, and then we just were able to get the draft report tidied up and uh, hand it over to Sue. Okay. Um, like Corinne said, we came in and we interviewed everybody and what the process was because you were changing um, from the computer, the accounting system that you were using, which to back to the one that you'd used years ago. So there's a little confusion with that just because the old one had all those people in um, that had retired. So in the new system, you had like retired people that were retired and people that had um, passed away. So that's all going to have to be caught up. Because what we did was we took your um, the list from WinCap, uh, yeah, WinCap, and we compared it to the Envision, which is the one that you're using now. So anybody that wasn't on here, we, we questioned why. And then people that were on here, we questioned over here. So the ones that were here were because, like I said, they had passed um, over here, they'd retired or passed away or whatever. Um, but everything happened to you guys at the same time. Your payroll person went out when we got there to do this. Um, and you were trying to catch up because that's what you were doing, what they did was they were, um, everything got converted. The rec did that. Um, everything got converted, and then um, you had to put in the sa the salary rates. And you also had, you were waiting for contracts to be settled. So it, it was a multitude of things that were causing things to not go as smoothly as possible. So but, um, so by the time we finished, all the things were in there, and we could check that what we had questions about were in there. And business office they were very great help they were you know really helpful because your payroll person was out so they were trying to do everything they could um, your superintendent he was checking the payroll I've never, I have to say not a lot of uh, superintendents I know that check that he was doing a great job of doing that um, it just it was difficult to do that but like I said we went through um, it's really important that the payroll department and the human resource um, work together. You also, in the last few years, you've had several different payroll people, you know, over the last 10 years, you've had human resources change, you've just had a new superintendent, new business person. Um, so in the, you've had three in the last, I don't know, 10 years or whatever, too. So, the, you know, that all is hard, but yet you've had some employees that have been there for a long time and you've dedicated employees. Oh, and you also had the treasurer change, too. So it, there were a lot of changes. So actually, for what you guys went through I think you did a really good job it just took time because first the 12 month people got put in because they had to get paid first and then the summer school people they got put in and then things like even normally you would do at the beginning of the year like um, the buyouts the health insurance buyouts they weren't entered until they had to get paid so it was just catching up is what happened but every like I said everything that we had checked um, had been done at the end um, So in the report, like I said, we went back and forth. But then we also picked um, <clears throat> 78 people to get a good sample of what um, we had. And unfortunately, like I said, this, um, the substitutes, they weren't in yet. The coaching positions, those weren't in there. So like when we were checking over here, a lot of those were the coaching ones. So we were, like I said, we were able to resolve that. But when we first started out, there was, if you look on page three, there were 21 teachers that were in there. That was because they weren't teaching until they got put in closer to September. There was teacher aides, the same thing, substitutes. Some of them hadn't even been hired. So you had also had people getting hired during the summertime, which was a lot of people. Um, the coaches, they weren't put in until closer to September. The bus drivers, same thing. They weren't driving during the summer, so they didn't get put in. But of all the ones that we have here the tutors, the 10-year amount, um, the sti team leader stipends that didn't get put in until they were approved for that year. So um, like I said, at the end, when we were finished with it, they were all put in. And um, it wasn't just because we asked it, you know, why, that's not why they just put in. 
So um, I think that everything now, you know, it's going to be have to be checked, and you're going to keep finding some things because things are going to pop up. Everybody, you know, it's a human process of putting all these rates in. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, there were six employees that should have been inactive in the new program. That's going to take time. You're probably still going to find some that we didn't even see. Um, but it's important, Lorraine and I were talking about that, it's important because of seniority, you want to make sure those people that were inactive are inactive and then put back time, because that time all counts. So um, it's going to take time to get everything all. But I think, I think everything's, you know, working okay now. Um, I think I didn't miss anything else. The employee hiring dates, you know, that should be checked. And probably when you go to next year, just double check that as, every, as it's being put in. Um, the salary agreements, those are, like, they weren't there because they weren't put in yet. And I know you're working on it to get them all done, but you're making sure that they're correct before you send it out. And I, I think that's really good, and um, you'll be able to get that done. Um, there was one other thing I was going to tell you. Talk about it, okay. Um, it's whenever there's a account, you know, a trans, a changeover, it's always difficult. I've seen districts do it July, I've seen them do it December, and it's always a problem. I know one district, the superintendent never got turned back on because his um, salary was over for the, um, the cutoff for Social Security and Medicare. And it didn't get switched back on because of every, there was also a change there too. So things happen like that. You didn't have that happen here, <laughs> but um, it, it's it's difficult. So you're back into the program that you know you're familiar with. You're all more familiar with. So um, I think if going forward, you're going to be fine. Payroll is a tough place anyway, and like I said, it just is really important that payroll and human resource work together. That's the most important thing to get out of this and. Um, you know, I think they're doing well, but I, you know, it's going to take time. But because you have good employees that, that you know, kept tr trying to make sure everything was right, you're li and you were lucky that you had people that knew the payroll as your payroll person was out, which was important too. So I don't know. Do you have any questions about the process or what we did? Basically, we picked people, we tested to make sure that they had, we looked at last year's WinCAPS um, salary agreements and made sure that the rate in the new year made sense with the contract. So that's basically what was being done in the office too. So we didn't find any difference with that. Everything um, everything that we had a question about was explained and it was, if there was any issues, it was fixed. So I just, I just had a question I mean typically you run do you run monthly or quarterly exception reports so that you can Actually, find every payroll okay so I've implemented that since I've started to as a payroll person run the report and it's called a change report so what's the difference between the prior pay period and the current pay period because that's where you'll find anything jumping off the page and so far so good we found a couple things that we need to correct and we can get that run so that's something that once she returned from break, we implemented. Um, I feel like we've implemented also controls in place and a, kind of, it's not an official checklist, but how things are entered. Um, so after the board meeting, HR will enter the information for the people, for the staff on the HR side, and then payroll will go in and make sure that they're turned on to be paid, and then make sure that we have all the paperwork now for deductions and, and different reasons for deduction of fees and whatnot well with benefits. So it has been um, a challenge to get all of that in from WinCap because they couldn't do it automatically for us. You know, some mm -hmm. systems can load from one software company or brand to another. They could not do that for us and we didn't learn of this until it was summertime, really, because they said, we can't do that for you. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're, I call it triage work. So we were entering the 12 months first, then the summer school, then the teachers, whoever was going to get paid next year, Feel like it was a it was um it was a rough time to audit it certainly right but it also helped us to make sure that we have the right controls in place now moving forward 
even though it's a, a new system, but it's an old system we used to use, but we do have new people in different positions who are not doing it. I'm just kind of I'm kind of thinking out loud. Um, so if I'm an employee, is there something like on a yearly basis or anything that sends to me uh, just a, a one like at a glance? This is what we have for your original hire date. This is what we have as your like. Is there something like that? Or are they just checking their pay stubs so that they can make sure it's accurate? Especially since we switched over. Oh, just, just yes. to make sure. So we do do salary agreements, and I don't think they're still. them because we didn't release them yet this year mm -hmm. because we wanted them to be as close to mm -hmm. correct and as we could get along and mm -hmm. check with them to make sure Andrea's worked really hard to make sure that they're accurate. So we plan to send those out hopefully this month. Okay. Just to have the date on there. I know longevity shows up on there so that sort of gives them an idea mm -hmm. of where they would be within the range at least. Um, but that, that does help and then and out of curiosity too, sorry, um, with their stub, I mean, they maybe you probably you probably already did this, just like a quick note saying, hey, we changed over to this new system. Can you please double check everything? And if you have any questions, here's who to contact. Yeah, we've okay. done that. That's Actually, what I figured. With the stubs, and also we went to direct or direct deposit stubs went to email, and we've changed the email now to include more information. But I didn't know we could until recently. So in Envision, we've put a note on there on who to contact if they have questions about attendance, because we also put attendance on there, or their salary. We've also Perfect. broken down their salary items on the email list as well, so that it's not just one lump sum, which is what we started with in the first place. Okay. Different stipend. Okay. Alan, I, I wish, looking back, I wish we had done differently. Because we were an Envision client before, we get supported through the BOCES. They talked us into, instead of basically building a new platform, basically building on top of what we already had, which really caused a lot of data issues that we had to go back one, literally one by one by one. We're still correcting some of those issues. In retrospect, we should have just built a new system. Would have been better, would have been a little bit more work, and perhaps some of that data would have been transferred a little bit more cleanly. But Hindsight's 2020. We tried to take their advice. They've done these conversions, but we just didn't have the data base. Does Envision have a <clears throat> an an online account for the staff members where they can simply log in? They can do. They can see everything at a snapshot. They can. Wincap does. Yeah, like Wincap does. They they're working on it. I don't think it's as good as Wincap because you can see. You can even yeah, put you your W 2s from. You could do, yeah, your W 2s, salary agreements, everything's done through there. Through the holdings, too, if I remember my experience. Yeah, I was just, yeah, and so I was just wondering if Envision had it or if they were. They're so working they're, on they're it. Working on yeah, because that that's, that's, nice that's a good module. feature where you just log in and everything's right there. Right. Yeah, yeah. attendance, all that jazz, yeah. It exists. Yeah. It exists. I just want to make sure our data is as accurate as, first. as accurate. I don't know if it's as yeah, thank you as WinCap is, but it does have some features. And I, ironically, from the back end, from an HR management standpoint, while their forward-facing platform for employees was probably a little bit healthier, they literally had nothing on the other side for human resource management. I couldn't get an employee head count. I couldn't get seniority reports. It was so cumbersome and clunky to work with with Envision. It's single click to be able to get so many of those reports and things. It's that much easier to work on the back end. And I know there's five of them. Yeah. Just simply have to sure. establish a new system. Yeah. Which is a board game. Yeah. Sure. Just to kind of piggyback off of that, like, what does the timeline look like till you think all the data is accurate and in? And pretty soon. I yeah. mean, she's been going through each person and the deposits and everything. So. Mm -hmm. Folder and looking and we, we had a per, sorry no, we had a per diem sub in that was working with her who has payroll experience was working with her and they were literally pulling file by file matching what was in the hard mm -hmm. copy personnel file from the same system and, and Ann said we've yeah. both we've both been watching closely I think we're going to transfer it. Awesome. 
pretty accurate with what Judge Cobb said. Okay. Do we have a timetable then for like another audit to come in? Or for, would it be safe to say like March time frame? To get back on track. Can, right. If we can start really soon okay. to do the update, I, that's, that's true. Whenever you are ready. You know, they're doing some of the test work for the towns and things, but um, whenever, you know, we can come in pretty soon. Yeah. Okay. So at least to get that update one done, and then we can talk about what, I don't know if you have any idea about the focusing next time, but at least get that part done and get this out up to date. Yeah. I'd almost like to put it out there for you to think about is the lunch fund. Are you looking at that next time? Because the lunch mm -hmm. fund, because now we've gone from three meals very good fund balance and we're going to look at losing that fund balance and how we can scale the city back up to that so hope that the state will provide free meals again but if they don't then at least we could be ahead of the curve something, maybe yeah, it's been a while planning. since we looked at the lunch was it yeah we did we looked at the cash receipt portion i remember i'm trying to think what else we're getting here really early in the morning to look at that to see how the cash receipt was, but there might be, you know, to look at, yeah, whatever, whatever you think. It's been a while. We did look a little at when you had that money coming, um, when we were looking, when during COVID, when you had to check and it was like that. I mean, they were all, every, every district had a problem with that. Because there was not a lot of guidance, and every district does things differently, and distributed the food different, you know. But I think they had a good handle. But it certainly would not hurt to look at that. Okay. Anyone have any other questions? Anyone else? Last comments. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. I appreciate Thank you coming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to close the audit committee meeting. Noted at 
Good evening. I'd like to call to order uh, a regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Goshen Central School District tonight, Monday, January 9th. Tonight's meeting is being held uh, in the administration building and live streamed through YouTube. Next on the agenda is Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of meditation. Please keep in mind the passing of James Wolf, a retired physical education teacher and former interim director of health, physical education, and athletics for our district. Next on the agenda is privilege of the floor. We do not have anyone signing up tonight, um, so I will forego reading the policy. Next on the agenda is um, the president's report. What I have on my report is that we have been able to fill the um, active board, the committees. Um, so just to go over those quickly. On technology, we have Billy, Tom, and Brett. Safety committee will be Tom Loftus, Jason Pucci, and Brett Whedon. The audit committee will stay the same with Billy, Shannon, and myself. The policy committee will now include Tom Loftus and Brett Whedon and myself. Uh, NISBA would be Shannon Johnson and Tom Loftus. And the Orange County School Board's legislative advocate is Tom Loftus and with the alternate as Brett Whedon. And the negotiations committee is Shannon, Jason, and Brett. I do need a motion to approve these. Shannon and Billy, be it resolved, the Board of Education adopts the revised list of the board committees for the 2022-2023 school year as presented. All in favor? That is all that I have for my report. Uh, next on the agenda is the legislative update, and that's Tom Loftus. The forthcoming meeting is this week, so I'll have an update for you guys at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the superintendent's report, Dr. Curtis Coates. Thank you, Ms. Salty. Uh, first, I wanted to uh, discuss with the board, late in November, the board had heard two presentations from both Erie One Policy Services and NISBA Policy Services. Part of our board goals and objectives for this year included a, uh, a policy audit and potential addition of a regulations manual. Uh, we were just seeking direction from the board on whether or not we wanted to move forward with either service. Uh, as we discussed during the presentation on both services, we have had Erie 1 for a period of time. However, uh, in the region, we have seen some school districts start to move over to the New York State School Board Association service. But tonight, we were just looking for direction from the board. Uh, if there is a recommendation uh, on where you would like to proceed so we can begin the audit. I just ask the board members, are you prepared um, to move ahead with one of the vendors? Do we, we could round table and just say who you would like to? Or are we in agreement with the vendor? We're in agreement with NISBA. So we'd like to move forward with NISBA. Okay, so we're in, we'll, we'll, start to reach, we'll start to reach out to them tomorrow, uh, whether we need to do any more formal agreements with them and uh, get some guidance on next steps. Thank you very much for that. So I am pleased to report also we have uh, received our cost estimates for the capital improvement project at Scotchtown Avenue for the summer. We have a meeting scheduled tomorrow to meet with Land Girard Associates and the representatives from Train to review not only the cost estimates but uh, the narrative of the scope of work that is included in there. Uh, we are somewhat optimistic about what we are seeing but don't want to um, really discuss anything further until we've had an opportunity to review and verbatim what they're explaining in the proposal. A first look at, at the budget, uh, we're somewhat optimistic, as I said, we're gonna get uh, all of the scope of work done that we discussed with the community, but again, we wanna review that very closely and we should be able, based on the information that they're sharing with us right now on availability of equipment, be able to move forward with that during the summer of 2023 as well. 
We'll have more information on that uh, after our meeting tomorrow, be able to continue to share that. If that information uh, is everything that we have discussed to date, because we are part of the Omnia uh, cooperative bid, we do not have to put the equipment and the labor out to bid. We'll be able to move forward with procurement right away. That was part of the benefit of going to the cooperative bid cycle. So uh, today, Mr. Fries and Ms. Lammer and I were discussing how to store that equipment. Obviously, it comes early. Again, this will go in tandem with the roof project that is scheduled to go on at Scottstown this summer as well. Again, all of this seems to be looking very positive right now. Uh, I want to draw to the board's attention uh, a bill that the governor signed. So as you know, there are many different pilots that come across your res uh, for your approval on resolution on a regular basis. The biggest one in the district right now being the Legoland pilot. Uh, in addition to that, we have some new warehouses that uh, could be on the books. We have many different solar pilots on, that are on the books. Some of the greatest challenges that we have had over time with the pilot agreements uh, is when the pilot agreements expire. And what we have seen a track record of is when those pilot agreements expire without notice, the property owners have been able to go in and challenge the assessed value of the properties. The most recent that we've dealt with uh, has been the our portion of the Galleria Mall to the tune of uh, several million dollars in tax refunds that we had to give when they came off. To date, IDAs and uh, any of these pilots have not had to share any of their intent with municipal agencies, including school districts. This new legislation that the governor has signed basically gives more notification, more lead time from, from what we can see in the legislation to school districts to be able to plan for this. We have to look at how we are going to fund these refunds when they come up. We have to look at how we are going to plan for this for the future. We have to look at our tax tertiary reserve to make sure that we don't get caught off guard with any of these. Obviously, if our tax tertiary reserve fund was to, to run down, we'd either have to look at refunding this through the operating budget or we'd have to borrow to be able to pay those tax certs back. And, and we don't want to be in that position. So this legislation will help us. I, I've had some communication today with our newest elected state officials, trying to get some more uh, depth on the language of this legislation, just so uh, I'm not looking at just the high-level summary from the governor's office. But again, this information on the surface looks positive for us as a school district as well. Finally, um, we have had 14 community members sign up to uh, become members of the Facilities Advisory Committee. I'm going to work with Mrs. Gore to schedule our first meeting for the 25th at 6 p.m. In doing that, the goal will be to allow the volunteers to get an in-depth look at what we were dealing with in terms of not just maintenance, but potential renovations to our facilities in the future. We're going to talk extensively with them about how we fund ongoing maintenance and any potential capital work. And the ultimate goal will, will be to have one of those committee members report back to the board before you are required to adopt a budget this year on what were their findings, what might be their recommendations and priorities for the board. Obviously, how we pay for those things and how we fund those things are the responsibilities of the board and the administration, but we need to do that with public input. And we're hopeful that this process will give them an opportunity to see what it is we look at and how we're faced with how we fund those renovations that are necessary and that maintenance that is necessary at the same time. Uh, I think we're very fortunate with the cross section. We have two people that are private business owners that signed up. We have several parents. Uh, we have a few staff members that signed up. So we have a very good cross section of volunteers that are on the committee. That, that is my report for the evening, Mr. Salty. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Next on the agenda, we are going to switch um, speakers around a little bit. Um, we will have the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum, Instruction, Personnel, and Technology Report go first. Mr. Jason Clark. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Salty. Good evening, everyone. Uh, before we get into the presentation, I just want to take a moment to uh, mention that Dr. Coates and I had the opportunity last Friday to attend the Scotchtown Avenue Positive Behavior Intervention and Support Program launch was in the gymnasium. I would like to say it was a, a very exciting moment for us. We had some of our K-1-2 students, or actually all of our K-1-2 students, rather excited for their new PAUSE program. Uh, so 
In this particular uh, launch program, we had GIS students who arrived from Mrs. Crop's class to put on some skits to thoroughly explain um, each of uh, the steps to, to achieve greatness and success uh, at Scotchtown. More importantly, they were able to show each step in action. Um, you know, a lot of laughs, a lot of giggles, a lot of smiles, and that's the most important piece there. Uh, our students did a wonderful job. We also had the GHS cheer team uh, there to provide some support, uh, a lot of great cheers. Um, really got the crowd going, so we were grateful for that as well. And the Scotty mascot made an appearance, which is always nice to see. So we had little Scotty running around. Um, we're not going to tell you who was running around in the suit. Um, I'm almost certain it was a little hot in there as well. Um, but it was a great program today in the cafeteria. They also went through what it's like to have uh, positive behavior in the cafeteria and spoke of earning the little paw prints that can be redeemed for rewards. So um, this, is, this is a great positive program at Scotchtown. I want to take a moment to thank Ms. Driscoll and the Scotchtown team, of course, Mrs. Crop and all of her students, the GHS cheer team, um, and all of those who, who had a part in organizing this and collaborating to make it happen. Um, so we're very grateful. For the record, Mr. Carter was trying to size up if he would fit in the Scotty uniform, but I think it's going to work. Mrs. Driscoll <laughs> just outright refused. <laughs> I'm, I'm aiming for the gladiator suit personally. So this is a perfect segue. Uh, we have some of our teachers from Goshen Intermediate School with us to give you a, a short presentation on Choose Love and, and how that's been going at the Goshen Intermediate School. Uh, this is a part of our, our character and social emotional learning program um, at GIS and throughout the district. Dr. Wentworth has chosen a few of his teachers who we believe are doing a great job, as many are, um, <clears throat> in the building and in the classrooms. You know, this promotes positive attitude, it promotes positive relationships, and, and these are really um, all of the attributes and characteristics that we wish to promote even through our PBS, uh, PBIS program. So. Uh, without further delay, if we can have some of our teachers come up with Dr. Wentworth uh, and Ms. Mrs. Rorison, that would be great. Okay, so thank you for having us tonight. Um, get started with the uh, the presentation. Um, you know, before anything, I want to do uh, kind of give a quick overview. Certainly, after the pandemic, uh, we've noticed the need for a little bit more support for the students' social emotional well being. Um, the district adopted the Choose Love program at the beginning of last school year, um, and we started looking at it. And some of the the staff came knocking on my door. Or, I should probably say barging in, saying we want to get this started, we want to get rolling with it. So I'm not taking any credit for it tonight. Uh, this is truly the, the Choose Love team here at GIS that was able to put this together and get it implemented and running. So I'm going to let the experts kind of explain, and then we're going to see if this is working correctly. Yeah. Great. Thank you for having us. Um, why choose love? So to understand why choose love, we must understand where it originated from. Um, Scarlett Lewis is the founder. Her son, Jesse, was one of the victims of Sandy Hook. So because of this devastating event, she realized that the, our children need social-emotional learning support. Um, she developed this research-based program, and she realized um, that it was able to spread internationally. Um, Scarlett wanted to have a program that empowers students to understand and to cope with their emotions um, and to ensure that all children are seen and validated. Um, this provides students with a toolbox of these essential skills so the students learn how to have relationship building, communication skills, emotional management, um, coping skills. So <clears throat> through the Choose Love, our schools can provide appropriate behavioral interventions, and this will support our children. We've learned that the students that feel safe and have a sense of belonging are more successful in their academic endeavors. And we have a few of the pictures 
students there. Sorry, that's okay. Uh, so the next slide shows Choose Love annually um, collects survey-based program evaluation data to qual um, for quality improvement purposes. So some of the highlights, we're not going to read all of that, but some of the highlights that we chose, 73% uh, of the educators reported students show less aggression and more self-emotional control. 84% um, reported an improvement in classroom climate since using Choose Love, and 81% reported an improvement in students' behavior since using Choose Love. So this is a whole bunch of other data on this. So please go ahead. So at GIS, uh, we really have uh, incorporated Choose Love across our entire building. So you will see on here that we have posters in the hallway that connect to some of the literature that we read, as well as to some of the themes about um, being a, having your bucket and filling up your bucket and feeling good about yourself and other people. Don't be a dipper and you know dip into somebody else's bucket and, and spread negativity. It's, it definitely um, you know, has the theme that it's in our hallway, it's on our bulletin boards, and we have had the posters made that really connect to the four components of Choose Love. So we have four units that we focus on, courage, gratitude, forgiveness, and compassion and action. And then wrapping those together, it is Choose Love. Um, so we have these posters that are in all of our classrooms. We have them in the hallway. And it really just you know, builds unity across the whole building for the teachers and the staff and the students to know that this is really a huge focus for us and that it is about empowering the students and who they are and, and their emotions and their social well-being. Um, we also will even start with uh, brave breaths is, is a huge piece of what a lot of the lessons start with. Um, and each of the four components have different breaths that kind of focus them in a different area. But it really allows our classrooms individually to stop and to take a breath. And I love that we started with meditation here today because that's really what we are encouraging our students to do is focus in, um, you know, pull together your energy and your inner self, and then that puts your best out into the world. Um, when we came barging to Matt's door, um, we really like knew that we wanted to pull the components in lots of different areas. So. Um, luckily, the Choose Love program really did most of it for us. Like, it is a very well-adapted program that works from preschool all the way up till 12th grade, and it is completely laid out for us on what we have to do, um, and we were able to really take uh, the program and push it right into the classrooms in a very seamless transaction, I would say. Um, so... We have the slides, which are right from our Choose Love program. Um, the visuals match up with all of our lessons that we have. Um, so the slides really incorporate a lot of videos. They have um, you know, questions that we pose to students. Um, and it really allows us to pull it up, be ready to go. And then it's there for that communication and for the building relationships with our students. Um, we have a journal. Um, that is the example at the top. And the journal is just a reflection piece that we use um, throughout various lessons. And then we created, um, for each of the grades in G at GIS, we have a Google Classroom. And that really allows um, the staff to really connect with each other. We have all of our lessons there, but we have you know different pieces that we've created or different pieces that we've added in. So that way, we're really working together um, for each grade level to keep that unity from three to five so that way the students do see it when they come in in third and then they see those same pieces when, they, when they're when they still in fifth grade and a lot of that is seamless and we work within our grade levels to kind of build that up. And this is my favorite piece um, of the, the Choose Love program is really the ELA components and the diversity that it pulls across um, the entire program. So um, a lot of the lessons have books and we have purchased the books and we have videos of the books being read to the students and they really allow us to kind of stop and make connections with characters from the books or make connections with the themes and the morals of the different books. Um, Moody Cow is just a funny book on like how your emotions can take over and that everybody is a moody cow at some times. 
And when you really just pull it into center yourself and take a minute of a brave breath or take a minute of meditation, it really lets you reflect and have a better outcome for yourself. Um, that has a great activity that goes with it. Um, but it really allows our program to really connect with um, worldly concepts. It's very diverse, and the themes in there are really what um, the students just can stop and enjoy a book, and we get to kind of connect with it. So the, the ELA is my favorite piece. Mm -hmm. I have to slide by accident. I think I'm you did. Try. That's okay. Or we lost. Um, All right, jump down here. Hold on. No? We lost a slide. That's okay. That's okay. That's you want okay. to go over the journal? <laughs> You want to talk about the journal writing? Yes, still? so there was one other picture. I did mention the journal writing, but um, the journal writing is, a, is a, another piece that connects with the ELA, and it really allows our students to have a reflection and a connection to their inner self and write about it. And I think that that's a huge positivity for them to, you know, take uh, one of the books that we spoke about and then have a simple question, um, you know, how do you connect with that character or how have you felt after somebody, you know, hurt your feelings. And it just allows our students to, you know, connect in a written form. And it doesn't have to be perfect, which is nice for a journal aspect. It really just lets them have a reflection. Um, it lets them make a connection. And it really helps helps that healthy factor of just sitting and thinking and reflecting on um, their their social factors, their emotional factors, and their connections with the world. Um, and then when we can stop and share the journals together, we're really you know building communication and eye contact and allowing our students to you know have those discussions that are just positive and reflecting on maybe a negative situation and then turning it around and seeing how it can be better. Yeah, so the, uh, I, I'll start this next section just by saying that working with the staff at GIS, this is like a, every principal's dream to have a staff come to you and say, hey, we want to get this going. And not only that, they have truly, they're, they're not even giving themselves the credit of what they've actually done. They've created all sorts of resources. They've tapped into what is already up on the Choose Love website. Um, so really, when we began the implementation piece, um, certainly, we were taking a look, you know, we did begin last year. One of the pieces we, we rolled out was how do we get this so that our staff understands it as well. It's not a, an overall, um, you know, everything new is a little bit nerve-wracking, right? Um, so what the, the team decided to do is at the faculty meetings, they went through all of the different type of meditation, breathing, um, mindfulness moments. So the brave breath is one of them that they've talked about, but we did that with the entire staff. We, we did activities with them. Um, you can see the bookmark on the bottom left there. That uh, was kind of a model from Choose Love. We worked with BOCES to help get those printed so that every student has it. On the back side are the components of Choose Love. Um, and as I walk around the building, as I'm doing observations, as I'm walking in and out, I see these things happening with the kids. And honestly, it's kind of nice sometimes to walk in and stop and do the brave breath with them and um, just listen to the way the teachers talk with them, the, that social emotional piece and kind of an option when they're feeling overwhelmed um, has been great to watch. Uh, we've also integrated into our um, discipline and behavior conversations. So, uh, we have the posters up in our offices, so when the students are in there speaking with us, we can go through some of those components. Um, you know, you see kids get very upset and angry, it's like, so we can have that conversation of, well, let's take a look, what can we forgive in this situation? That's within your control to be able to forgive something that's happening. Um, we have begun really integrating them into our theme weeks, which we've been doing for years, but now we're trying to just get all of these components tied together. Um, every day on our announcements, we also have quotes being read that go along with our themes. And our family newsletter, um, we are trying to incorporate pieces. There's a, a whole section that families can sign up for for free online on the web. Um, and we're taking components of that to share out in the newsletter. Uh, but families can also access all of that for free and, and give some resources for home as well. Um, just this is one of those pieces where they're not giving themselves enough credit, but across all grade levels, we have scope and sequence that has been developed. Um, and they did this over the summer, summer curriculum writing um, that was supported by the district. And 
this is a lot of work that they made look very, very easy, uh, but is incredibly helpful, and they've got everything tied right in. Um, these are also tied to the Google Classroom, so the teachers all have that information ready to go for them. And then this is kind of the outline of the yearly plan. We took the, the different components, we broke it down into how many lessons there are for each component, and then broke it out over the year. Um, a lot of these lessons take a couple days to get through. We, we give it about 15 to 20 minutes a day if we're possible. Um, but we are finding that sometimes you, you invest that time up front to help students, um, and you save time on the back end because we're, we're seeing students being able to handle some of their emotions um, some of their conflicts with peers a little bit better because of it. Lisa, take over the next bit here. So moving forward, our committee um, at CIS really wants to focus on taking teens' love and turning it into So we have the All Star program at CIS. Students can earn So in moving forward and getting this group together, we'd really like to focus on this frame of Tom being the focal point. So we want the staff to earn cooperate, ask questions, listen, and make notes. So students would remember that phrase and that, that would be one of the things that they think of things that they can do to demonstrate those positive behaviors and demonstrate the lessons they've taken from Tease Love in a different way, you know, in the classroom. So moving forward, we really do want to focus on the on the ground and at the school level as well. So we want to step into the step into that and really have conversations and have those conversations with the families and with the teachers and with the students within that setting to ensure that everyone is doing their best to help them. We also want to make sure in incorporating the two that students and staff alike are using the same language and that they can be fair and open and talk to each other more. And, um, So um, we also wanted to talk a little bit about the Tease Love Circle. If you visit the Tease Love website, um, there is the Tease Love Circle. So that is an opportunity for families to take a look at what their children are learning in school and what they're talking about. And so it gives you the opportunity to have those conversations with your family and with your students as well. As we know that homeschooling is something that's very loaded and it's very hard to Oh, we jumped around, so you can you can see the. Oh, and I, this slide we did. This is the part where uh, I it must be that uh, Mrs. Pacciarelli shifted some things for us. So thank you from from here, because I know she's probably watching. Uh, Mrs. Pacciarelli really did want to be here tonight. She was upset she couldn't attend, um, but she did share a quote on the bottom here that um, you kind of take a look. Um, Honestly, the, the feedback that we've been receiving from the teachers overall has been very positive. Um, you know, we always have our growing pains as you implement anything new, but um, we really have not run into many roadblocks in the uh, implementation. And I think that, you know, I work with Mrs. Petrelli in the classroom, and we really have loved doing this together and really building it and allowing time each day to reflect on it. And I have to recognize Ro because Ro was definitely a building leader um, for, on the fifth grade level. I mean, she really, you know, looked at it and pulled so many great aspects together for her students and made it really come alive in your slides and in your journal. And I think that fourth grade and third grade really look to you to like know that like it can be so much more. So I really just think that everyone, you know, everybody worked together. Yeah but it really has Thank a you. great model in fifth grade. So I think that's an awesome, an awesome way to keep it going. So do you have any questions for us? No, I just, I wanted to say that I was super excited about it. I remember when Stacy Orzel was involved and you know, we had some brief conversations and she kept, we kept trying to have a time to sit and talk about it. Um, but I did go on the website a little bit, but it's great that you guys, I, I really love that you're keeping the mo momentum going. Um, you know, I'm just curious to see if we can keep it going. I'm also curious how the other builders are doing with the program. You guys have tailored a little differently depending on the group. But it really is, it sounds like a really good program and you guys sound so passionate about it. So it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to thank you so much too for your 
enthusiasm and the initiative it takes. It's so hard to start a program like this because it's so all-encompassing. But um, when it's done with fidelity, it's it's a wonderful program. So I just really appreciate it. Um, that's it. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have the Assistant Superintendent for Business Report, Maureen. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right. Thank you and good evening. Tonight, I'm going to just review the budget process, I'll do an overview of where we are in the development process. Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the, back in the summer, you may recall that you've approved the budget calendar. This slide shows a summary of that budget calendar. <clears throat> and I'm just going to review with you what we're working on. So from September through December, we begin our budget discussions with the administrators and the directors. We also review our fund balance and reserves. This is typically done at the end of November or the beginning of December, and that's because our stated numbers come out at that time. <clears throat> the ST3 and the forms A and F are due in September on the 1st, and that data is uploaded to the state, and then they take it and project our numbers for the state aid for the current year. And that's when we would look, look at the fund balance. And then we start our budget development guidelines and share them with principals and directors. In January through February, we're continuously working on the budget for 23-24. And we also review the governor's projections. The governor is supposed to be giving the state address tomorrow, so we hope to have those numbers from the governor within the next few days. And that's what we will base our budget around, the governor's state aid projections. <clears throat> we also review the enrollment projections, and that's based on our current numbers just projected. There's no um, magic formula, really. And for kindergarten, it's based on a five-year average from the past. It is hard to predict these numbers, but we do build in contingencies to the budget for any changes that could occur over the summer or increases in our, in our class sizes. <clears throat> Sorry. In March through April is when we really ramp it up and do our presentations to the board. We have two presentations in March, and that covers the expenditure or the budgetary side. And then April is when we typically do the revenue side of the budget. The final budget is adopted by the board in April, and our tax levy cap is due. The calculation is due on March 1st. The property tax report card is due on April 25th. <clears throat> in May this year, the public hearing is going to be on May 2nd, and the annual budget vote will be on May 16th. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> so our develop budget development goals. We base our budget development on a few things. The first being in support of the board goals. This year, the board goals, we have three up here listed. The creation of a district facilities plan. As Dr. Coates um, mentioned in his report tonight, we do have a facilities committee put together and we will be working on future projects, capital projects or capital outlay projects. Um, we're also working on the creation of a plan for the electrification of our bus fleet. This is due to the um, changes coming down. Right now, we're told as of 2027, the school year 2027, we must begin purchasing non-fossil fuel 
buses for transportation. And all of the fleet has to be changed by the year 2035. So we have, we, it seems like it's a ways out, but it really will be here before you know it. And we're also working on the adoption of the policy audit and the administrative regulations creation. We also keep in mind the strategic plan, um, and I won't read it completely, but up there is the strategic plan. Um, we want to continue strengthening and facilitating a safe and respectful environment for our students where they have a voice and a choice and support in their choices for personal careers and careers in academics. And also with the design and implementation of a comprehensive and aligned K through 12 path. Um, regardless, we do want to make sure our student achievement is supported and with respect to uh, social and emotional well-being as well. Some other budget development goals include ensuring the highest quality teaching and learning for our students. We want to provide a safe and supportive learning environment. And we want to maintain adequate staffing to meet the programmatic and student needs. We're also going to continue capital project planning and facility maintenance and upgrades. And we want to do all of the above while maintaining our financial stability. And do this with it while we stay within the tax levy cap calculation. This year, I want to adjust the budget lines to accurately reflect the expenditures. And I'm also adding some new codes so you will see these changes when I do the presentation. We do the presentations in um, March where the changes are happening. And we want to keep transparency in the budget development. And we do that with um, our presentations and posting them on the website. <clears throat> so this next slide um, is really informational only. I, it is, see, I'm glad you have it up in front of you. Um, <laughs> it's for you to consider when you're providing us direction with where we're going to go with the budget in regards to the tax levy and the tax levy cap. So you really have three options to consider when levying the tax taxes. You can go with a zero increase, you can go up to the levy cap, the maximum amount, or you can also land somewhere in between. That's a decision that you will have to make as we move forward. So up here I have listed the four prior school years or a current year and three prior. The next column is intended to show the change in the cap percentage. So that's the cap calculation percentage change from year to year. Next I have the budget tax levy increase. This is what the board and the district chose to go out with for a levy cap or I'm sorry not a levy cap for a levy percentage increase. The next two columns are the dollar amounts. So you have the tax levy cap amount and the tax levy amount, which is what we actually raised. And the total difference in the next column and the aggregate or the cumulative amount each year of those two differences. So in, for example, in 2019-20, the cap increase was 4.4% between the cap amount for 2018-19. The budget tax levy increase was 3.5%. And that gave us a difference of $583,290. So we actually raised that much less in comparison with the levy cap. Then if you want to look at 2020-2021, the cap increased 2.4% from the prior year. And the budget, again, the tax levy was a 3.5% increase. And the dollar difference was $5,000. The aggregate was $588,290. And so each year I went through to show you a comparison of where the levy cap changed. I'm sorry, where the levy changed and where the cap changed. So the cap is a calculation based upon gross numbers uh, that we get from the state and the percentage of CPI. This year I did do a projection for 23-24. Those numbers aren't ready for us yet, but I just did it based upon the current growth rate, which was used for 22-23. And the cap is showing an increase of 1.8%. However, and if you were to go with a zero levy increase, <clears throat> the dollar difference would be a little over $1.6 million. So in other words, we could go up to 55.7 million according to the cap calculation, or we could raise $54 million, or again, land somewhere in between. And that's why I put on here that it's, first of all, it's an estimate only for 23-24 at this time, but also there's a, a half a percent 
the total amount that that would be is 270,200. Mm -hmm. If we were to go up 1%, it's 540,400. <clears throat> so these are all things to keep in mind as we move further along. Now the, the governor has talked about making our foundation aid whole. And if that were to occur last year, the numbers released for this year's projections would be close to $5 million. That is a big chunk of aid. However, that's just the foundation aid. So we could have changes in our expense-driven aids and in our um, excess cost aids. All of those could change. So our total pocket of money may not be $5 million. It could be less or it could be more. Depends on how this all comes out as the governor makes her speech tomorrow. But we haven't heard any indications that she's not going to make us whole. So, but I don't know what the other formulas will be like. I, I hope that they'll be the same. <clears throat> So that's also something to consider when setting the tax levy. Um, also, I expect the CPI to be 2% in the calculation because that's the highest number that you can go. Right now, as of November, CPI is 7.1%. The new numbers will come out for December on the 16th of January, so we'll have a better idea. But just to give you an idea of the increases, food has gone up 12%, which I'm sure you've all <laughs> felt in your own pockets. And energy levels are at 13.1% of an increase from last year. So that's also things to consider because we will have increased expenses, no doubt, in the energy for certain for um, the school year. No, I know I threw a lot of information out there with this slide. So if you have any questions, um, open. Go forward. Or <clears throat> Would you recommend the timeline be for the board to have information for you? We're going to wait until the governor for solid numbers. I would like so to we'll look at like a March or, something. Mm -hmm. or even February okay. if we could oh, have this meeting have it um, as a discussion item because okay. we'll keep moving forward with the governor's numbers and then the, the levy. We really talk about yeah, the revenue know. section of the budget in April, but we do want to plan ahead as well. And the reason why we do revenue in April is because that's when the final, hopefully, state budget's about to come, and that's the time to plan. <laughs> Not always Question about the foundation aid. <laughs> you said up to $5 million and you won't know that till you get it. Is there any estimate? Is that put in this at all? Do you make any estimate towards that $5 million or that? No, that's just a, a number. That's just a fact. So I mean, these are just this is all, current. Yeah, this is all local <clears throat> tax. Just local tax. Right. So nothing, nothing, nothing. That's why I'm just checking. Yeah. There's nothing put in this yet. Yeah, correct. correct. I can have updates for you after this week, I think. So February would be a good time to plan. Any other questions? Okay. If I can get it in order. Okay. So here's some important dates to remember for the budget development process. We have our first presentation on March 6th, and that's usually the budget side or the expenditure, expenditure side. On March 20th, we'll have another presentation. And on April 11th, that's when we'll present the revenue side. On April 17th is when we want to adopt the final budget because I also have to file the property tax report card um, by the 25th of April. Our petitions for board candidates are also due on April 17th by 5 p.m. On April 25th, that's the property tax report card submission is due. Public hearing is on May 2nd, and on May 16th is the annual budget meeting. And here's our mission statement. I also wanted to throw this in here to remind everybody that we keep this in mind as well when doing our budget development goals. So I'm not going to repeat that again for you, but we do want to make sure we have the support for our faculty and staff and students to keep us moving forward as possible. And if anybody has any questions, there's our contact information. And we'll post this up on the website as well. So. <laughs> Thank you. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. I need a motion. We have Shannon and Tom. 
It resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education accepts the retirement of Joseph Candelo, science teacher, effective June 30th, 2023. Mr. Candelo has been with the district for 23 years. Be it further resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the remainder of the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor? Opposed? No old business, new business. I need a motion to approve uh, minutes for the regular meeting. I have Billy and Brett. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the minutes for the December 19th, 2022 regular board meeting. All those in favor? Opposed? 11.2, need a motion to accept donations and increase the budget for the student loan um, uh, lunch, excuse me, the student lunch debt. Billy and Shannon. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education accepts the following donations totaling $550 from community members for the purpose of paying down student debt on unpaid school lunches. The $550 shall be placed in revenue account code C2705. I think it's important to recognize folks. Cynthia Han, $20. Megan Arfsen, if I'm saying it correctly, $25. Megan Boraden, $10. John Pellegrino, 25. Kaylin Kehoe, 25. Kathleen Kilroy, 25. Amy Frederick, 25. Susan, Susan Armistead, 40. Joan Forrester, 10. Megan Kramer, 45. Karen Flanagan, 10. Christina Farrar Jones, 15. Belwa Youssef, 100. Carla Lieto, hopefully I'm saying it right, 50. Alan, um, thank you, Melnickel, 100. Thank you to everyone who donated for that. All those in favor? Opposed? Next, I need a motion to approve overnight trip for the wrestling team to tournament in West Winfield. Billy and Tom? Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves an overnight trip for the wrestling teams to attend the Mount Markham tournament in West Winfield, New York from January 20th through January 22nd, 2023. Be it further resolved that the board reserves the right to cancel or reschedule any school sponsored trip or activity in the event of an emergency condition outside of the control of the school district in its sole discretion. All those in favor? Opposed? I need a motion to approve agreement for services, SJ and Associates, Shannon and Billy. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools. The Board of Education enters into an agreement with SJ and Associates to provide bilingual speech evaluation services for special education students effective for the 2022-2023 school year in the amount of $395 per evaluation. Be it further resolved, the Board of Education authorizes the superintendent to execute the agreement. All those in favor? Opposed? Next, I need a motion to approve entering into pilot agreement with Next, Next Amp, is that how you say it? Next Amp Solar LLC. I have Shannon and Tom. Whereas on October 11th, 2022, Next Amp Solar LLC developer notified the Goshen Central School District, District that it intends to construct a solar energy system on real property located within the district in accordance with real property tax law 487. And whereas the statute provides the developer with a 15 year tax exemption on any increase to the value of the real estate on which the solar energy system is constructed. And whereas the statute requires the district to notify the developer if the district intends to request the developer enter into a payment in lieu of taxes pilot agreement within 60 days of receipt of the notification district. And whereas the Board of Education intends to request such a pilot. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education intends to request that developer enter into a pilot agreement in accordance with real property tax law 487 and be it further resolved that the superintendent of schools and such other employees and agents of the district are directed to undertake and complete all acts as required to affect the purposes of this resolution and be it further resolved that this resolution shall take effect immediately. All those in favor? Opposed? Next, I need a motion to accept a donation. 
Shannon and Brett. Be it resolved, the Board of Education does hereby accept with appreciation the donation by the class of 2020 of lighting and software to improve the quality of current district video and live streaming equipment for use by the Goshen Central School District. Be it further resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools that the following account within the extra classroom activity fund at Goshen High School be closed and that the remaining funds be transferred to another extra classroom activity fund account at Goshen High School as follows. Club fund to close, class of 2020. Remaining funds transferred to the student senate, $113.10. All those in favor? Opposed? Next, we have privilege of the floor. I don't believe anyone has signed up since. Next, board member issues or committee reports. I just would like to say, like, I loved hearing from GIS tonight about the Choose Love program. It was great to hear about SAS having their initiative of the PBIS. Um, I would just love if we could get an update on what secondary is doing social emotional lives, you know, especially as we're moving into budget season, if there's something that needs to be done to support it um, moving forward. But I would love to hear from the secondary component of social emotional. Next, I need a motion to enter into executive session. Brett and Tom. Be it resolved, the Board of Education will enter into executive session with the intent not to reconvene a business portion of the meeting for discussions related to the employment history of a particular person or persons. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you, everyone. That concludes tonight's meeting. Have a good night.